You are listening to the postcast presented by the Locked On Senators podcast and the Glebe Central Pub. Make sure you check out the Glebe Central Pub right in the heart of the Glebe. Awesome food, great drinks, the atmosphere to match, and the Send Shuttle. Just $17 to and from the CTC for the last time this season. Get your tickets for the April 13th bus. Sends taking on Montreal to wrap up their home schedule. Tonight was fan appreciation night. And they showed up for the last half. We'll get into all that and more. I'm Ross Levitan. With me, as always, it is Brandon Pillar. Pilsy, your thoughts on a 4-3 loss to New Jersey, a tale of two games. Well, Ross, if you can't win games, at least battle in games. And who better to battle or lead your team into battle and drag guys through it than the captain, Brady Kachuk? 16 hits tonight for Brady Kachuk. That is the most hits in a single game since the NHL started tracking hits. So I think Brady made his point very clear. We might be going down, but we're going down swinging. And he almost swung the puck in the net with 21 seconds. Sends down one offensive zone faceoff. Giroux wins it wide open, Brady. And he had been terrorizing the D pair of Brendan Smith and Kevin Ball in the third oh, yeah. period. Two big boys, too. He threw Especially Kevin. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. He he torpedoed him into the boards this shift after. And well, what started it all, where Brady Kachuk gets into it once with Kevin Ball. Then at this at the end of the shift, he's like, Well, I'm already heading this way, anyways. Decides to drop Dawson Mercer off at his bench on the way. Mind change. See ya. Then he comes out the next shift. And as he steps on the ice, the breakout comes up the boards his way. Down he goes, back of the net. And he makes it a one-goal game, Pilsy. At least they fought. At 4-1, there was no life in the building. There was no life on the ice. It was almost as pathetic as the 6-0 game we saw just two nights ago at the CTC. I don't know. It was awful at the start of the game. We had I know this kind of covers up everything in the second half. We had Anton Forsberg pulled for the sixth time this season. After allowing a goal on the second shot, what's that, 17 times this year? At plus the last three straight games. Yeah. That's how fast it's counting, Pills. You can't even keep up. 18, 19, 20. Minnesota, Florida tonight, New Jersey. Three straight games where they allow a goal in the first two shots of the game. And they Not lose eight, all those games. Six. Weird. Not six. Tonight, at least, they battled back. It was at 1.9 straight goals they had given up after. We saw the first of those nine in Minnesota. Yep. But, uh, it was really 10 because Minnesota got a goal called off that really was in the back of the net. Big time, yeah. Brady Kachuk's the story of this game, though, if you're an Ottawa Senators fan. The NHL record most hits, but Pilsy, not only that, seven shots on goal. We just dissected the one that went in the back of the net behind Jake Allen. Just like you couldn't after the Florida game tonight, if there's one guy that's going, that's leading this team, that's fighting through the meaninglessness of these games, it's Brady Kachuk, and he did it again tonight. And the thing is, too, Ross, like, it's not like Brady was out there just being a goon. Like, sure, he was throwing the weight around, getting hits, finishing his checks, going out of his way to make big hits. And that's one thing. But he also scores that big goal, like you mentioned. He had that opportunity at the end of the game where he had that one-timer. And if he just gets a little more on it, I think he elevates it over Allen's pad. And that's an epic moment where... Again, meaningless game and a tying goal. But with the crowd getting as amped up as they were, if he scores that goal late in that game to tie it, whew, that ends up being a massive moment and a game-changing moment as well. Because I think the Senators, they had the momentum and the crowd was with them. I think they would have carried it to a great overtime period and had a really good chance to win this game. You know those momentum moments is what makes sports great and especially what makes playoffs great and why we need to get back to it so badly when you can feel something building and then they actually blow the roof off the building. They came that close to doing it tonight on fan appreciation night, but fans will have to settle for their Tim Stutzla bobblehead in a game that Stutzla could not play in because of the hit he took against Florida Pilsy. We found out about that today, missed the morning skate, could not play. So Brady took that upon himself that he was going to have to add even more offense. And look, we talk so much about Brady. We'll get to uh, the other uh, situation that the captain found himself in at the end of this game. But Ottawa also came close to tying it a couple minutes earlier. Drake Batherson wide open, and he can't 
put it just a little wide. What was the closer chance, though, Pilsy? That or when Ottawa got a power play with four minutes left? Jacob Chikrin all alone in the slot, double clutches, and then gets the shot blocked. I thought the angle, everything he had there, that was a real opportunity to at least make the goalie make a big-time save. Ross, I'm going to go off the board. I'm going to say neither of those were the biggest chances, in my opinion. Shane Pinto in front of the net. Sens are whacking away at it. Allen is down and out. Pinto whacks at it. Flutter puck hits the post and doesn't go in. Even Pinto, you know it's one of those moments, Ross, because the second it hits the post, Pinto's like, ah, and then tries to keep going and stick with the play. Like, he can't even help himself. He's like, man, that was so close. I had it. So, Ross, that was the moment for me, other than the Brady one-timer, where I was like, they're going to get it. They got it. He gets a stick on it. Off the post. Come on. Game ended up being close, that close. But instead, the Senators lose again. Third straight loss after a five-game win streak, but Brady Kachuk sets an NHL record with 16 hits. Pillsy, New Jersey as a team had 19 hits in this game. What a beast. They're not going to count the hit that Brady Kachuk laid on Nico Heischer after the final buzzer on the stat sheet, but certainly caused the scene. Nico Heischer coming down. Clock strikes midnight as he crosses the hash marks and just just let it in. I think he knows what he's doing, but do you subscribe to the people who are talking about how that's the equivalency of Ridley Gregg putting a slap shot into an empty net two months earlier? Equivalency? I don't think so. There's a big difference between scoring a goal while the game is happening and scoring a goal after the game is done. Now, mind you, we're talking about a couple seconds here, and it's not like he sure blasted into the net. Could he have decided to hold on to the puck and not put it into the net? Absolutely. So did he make a decision, even if it was a quick one without like a lot of malice or, or intent? He did make the decision to tuck that one in the net. And for a guy, a Swiss guy, Ross, usually the Swiss, they're pretty neutral in things. They're not stirring stuff up or joining in on stuff. I don't know. I feel like he sure didn't mean to be a a prick about that. So I'm not that upset about it. But at the same time, you're heated. The crowd's into it. Brady Kachuk, he's doing everything he can to pull this team out from an embarrassing start like you talked about. He did just about everything to do it. And then a moment like that happens, I can see where the wires are crossed. And Brady's like, 16 hits wasn't enough. I got to get a piece of someone else here. So I get it. But And also, Ross, other fan bases... Of course, they're going to latch onto this and make those comparisons. So, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. I guess I don't really care, honestly. You know what else they they can do? They can uh, figure out not only the the fact that you know that he sure is going to try to get Brady going because of what happened earlier in the game, right? I'm sure he's seeing how Brady's kind of terrorizing Kevin Ball, throwing big hits, putting his buddy Dawson Mercer into the bench. So, I get it from that standpoint, but. If I'm the Senators, you know what else I notice, and I, I tell other fan bases, didn't cross check him in the face. Just came and hunted him down. Just let him know you can't do it. But yeah, uh, that's fair. That's a good point. Just a reminder that the NHL rule book states can't cross check someone in the head. And Brady Kachuk must have read that part because he just went at he was looking to get after him, shake him up a little bit. I even like a little bit of emotion out of Jacob Chikrin, knew that he was the only guy that could kind of get a hand on him. So I gave him a little something. It wasn't anything to write home about, but better than they stood up for Tim Stutzla last night when Nico Mikola got him in the the back. Yeah, that was tough for Timmy, especially terrible timing. You want a guy to be there for uh, for his bobblehead night. Shout out SG. Thanks for the donation. Appreciate that. Um, but the Ottawa Senators, Ross, this didn't feel like a classic putting lipstick on a pig game for them. Now, sure, it started off terrible, but it really felt like they were in this game and we rattled off three, four, five chances for them to tie this game up and not just opportunities, but really good scoring chances. It felt like they had a chance to not only tie this game, but to get more momentum to ultimately win this one. So that's where this is better than, you know, those earlier games like that one in Buffalo where they score a couple goals at the end and who cares? It didn't really mean anything. And they had a handful of those uh, earlier on. So that's where, sure, you can make the fan appreciation jokes. You lost on fan appreciation night. That's not the best uh, 
PR stunt there, unfortunately, but the effort was there. And I think Sens fans realized that. And that is something that when you're down in the dumps, like the Ottawa centers are, and you just had an embarrassing loss, at least you want to see a full effort and guys battling. And we saw that tonight. So you got to tip your cap to the Sens team here. Sens scored two goals in the third period and just can't beat Jake Allen for a fourth time. Sens get 15 of their 28 shots in the final 20 minutes. New Jersey gets eight out of also 28. So the shots were tied in this game. Scoring chances about equal as well. Ottawa goes two for three on the power play. And the Sens PK goes two for two. Um, Not a whole lot of nights this year where you can say both sides of special teams did their part. What are the second most important part when people say special teams and goaltending? Two most important parts of hockey and the Senators could not get enough saves again. Stop me if you've heard that goalies. before. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought Corpy had a good game once he came yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. in relief, I mean, right? Yeah, and that's a tough situation. You always know that. He may not have looked the most comfortable on a few of the, the shots. Obviously, let's went in sooner rather than later, too. So he's kind of fighting from behind from that standpoint. But yeah, he settled into the game. Definitely yeah, gave Ottawa a chance to win. Yeah, so it's tough for Forzy. Obviously, you want him to have a better night than that. And it's especially bad optics in back-to-back home games, having to use both goalies in each game. But I think the Ottawa Center, like, pardon me, Ross, when it was 3 nothing, and they pulled the goalie, pardon me, it was like, just have Forzy battle through this. Like, you can't pull the goalies in back-to-back starts like this. But then I thought, you know what? This is Jacques Martin being like, we're not throwing in the white towel. Switch up the goalie. Let's squash that bad momentum, the bad vibe. Get Corpy in here, and let's try to battle back. And they did that. They, they were that close. And some in the chat are saying, look, that's what we want. Good effort. Play well. Yep. But get zero points because Montreal gets zero points tonight. Arizona gets two last night. So it's clumping up again there where Ottawa will draft five, six, seven, excluding the lottery. So that's, I mean, some people latch on to a top five pick, right? Can say that one way. Or. You can pretend it's a $4.95 million contract and you can tell everybody you signed Mark Mathot for under $5 million. Pat, pat on the back. (laughs) Because you know, Dorian, I was doing that with Batherson too. People in the chat wondering, Ali, our guy, wondering uh, what kind of contract Pinto. That's further to Friday's conversation on Locked On Senators. So make sure Ross would sign that deal right now. I would not. Go listen to Friday's episode to know what deal I'm signing Shane Pinto to if the opportunity arises where Pinto signing sooner than later. If you want to know why that's a probability again, Friday's locked on senators before we get to send central standouts and other storylines within this four, three sends loss to New Jersey in the penultimate word of the day, penultimate that's home game one. for the senators. The Sens, by the way, can no longer finish above 500. I'm counting OT losses as losses because it's the vibe okay. when you leave the CTC. Can't finish with an above 500 record anymore. They were 18 19 going into tonight. Yeah. 18 20 now. Unfortunate because if you're going to stink, stink on the road. Yeah, I'm with you. And when you're at the bar, you want to feel like you're at home. And at the Glebe Central Pub, you're always among friends. It's always a homey feel. It's always a great time. Go check out our friends at the Glebe Central Pub. The postcast is always brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. You can visit them right in the heart of the Glebe where they have great food, awesome drinks, and the Send Shuttle. I know it's winding down for the season. It's been a successful season of the Send Shuttle with the Glebe Central Pub. One more chance to get on the bus and have Sue take you to and from the CTC. We'll see her again in October, but go see her one more time. Next Saturday night, April 13th, Senators hosting the Montreal Canadiens. Beauty of the Glebe Central Pub. Not only, obviously, they'll have the game on TV there. Pilsy. You can explain the vibes on the bus and how easy it is to go through your night on the Glebe Central Pub shuttle. Oh, they make it an absolute breeze. Uh, I hate having to deal with traffic. I hate having to wonder what time am I going to get to the rink? Am I going to get there on time? With Sue, you know you're getting there on time. You know she's going to find the best route if there's traffic. Sue knows it like the back of her hand, the way to the CTC. She'll get you there on time. Have fun at the game. Go back to the parking lot, and Sue will bring you right back to the Glebe Central Pub to keep those good vibes going. 
Go to thegleavecentralpub.com and check out the Send Shuttle. Get your tickets there. You can also see all the great events that are going down at the GCP. The vibes are free at the GCP. Go check them out at 779 Bank Street and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. And this episode is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. You guys already know that FanDuel is the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. And for a good reason, they're North America's number one sportsbook. Why would you even try anywhere else? And Ross, if you're a sports fan, right now is the best time of year. Sure, maybe the weather's a little weird. It's snowing one day. It's hot the next day. You don't know what's going on. But you do know what's going on with FanDuel because you can bet on any sport you want. NHL, MLB, basketball. You got March Madness. Golf is heating up as well. And you can find everything you want on FanDuel. And why not if you're a new customer? Because new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet the tourney, bet on some baseball, basketball, hockey, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back to the postcast available on YouTube live after every Senators game. You can also find us on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. We are your team every day. That's Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan and Pilsy. I have a confession to make. Oh, let's hear it. I bet on the Ottawa Senators tonight. Okay, from puck drop or live or take us through it. No, I bet I decided that the Senators were going to put a show on for fan appreciation night. And I also thought that Brady Kachuk might be a part of that. So my play of the day for $7.77. Of course. Brady Kachuk goal, sends win. And now I'm poor, responsibly. Damn, that $7.77 that uh, knocked you down to poor status. I know, but after Brady Kachuk scoring the game winner in Winnipeg late, and that's a game I also had Brady score, sends win money line. It was a tough, tough beat tonight after the highs of last Saturday yep. night, exactly a week ago tonight. Yep. It's unfortunate, but Brady's come to play, man, despite this recent stretch from the team. Like, <laughs> It's it's unbelievable. It's video game number he's put he's putting up every night in terms of shots, hits, penalty minutes. I think have been more and more under control. But he is top three in the NHL in all three of those categories. That's impressive, and that's the thing, Ross. Like it's so it's so great for Sanders fans to see. Sure, things are bad. Things have been bad. Brady Kachuk has had to deal with a lot of crap. He's a young captain. He answers to the media, and he knows he's out of this embarrassing loss to his big brother at home last game, and he still brings it. You know, I feel like he could kind of be like, all right, I'm checked out of this season. When's the next vacation happening? Uh, Let's just... Let's just roll through this. But no, he's still giving good effort. He's out there battling, and that's why he's the captain in the face of this franchise. There's not a lot of things, Ross, that make Ottawa Senators fans proud these days. But having Brady Kachuk as our captain sure is one of them. I've never felt better. And obviously, I felt this way for a while now in terms of us making this selection before the season. But we hummed and hawed last offseason about our overall value rankings, whether Brady or Timmy was going to be number Mm -hmm. one. And the consistency is why I feel so good now, 77 games later, that Brady Kachuk is the most valuable player on this team. Correct. Bar none. If anything, I mean, we're going to reevaluate this in the summer, but yeah, Jake Sanderson, career high in points after his goal tonight. Yes. He's got 33. Then he added an assist on Brady's goal to boot to make it 34 points now for Jake Sanderson on the season. Second year in the league. Won't be 22 until August. It's looking good. Might be July, summer. Still on his entry-level contract. Unreal. Back to Brady Kachuk, and we will get to a couple other storylines. But this one is just unreal because since Brady Kachuk's hat trick against the New York Islanders in 12 games, he's got seven goals. He had an assist tonight on top of it. No. So he's got seven goals and eight assists in his last 12 games. And maybe even more impressive, 12 games, 62 shots on goal. (laughs) That's, That's ridiculous. Some guys on the team, I bet, who have played 
77 games might not even have 62 shots on goal. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. And uh, the thing with Brady, going back to our friends at FanDuel, Ross, I used to be like, okay, if Brady's shots prop is four and a half, not taking it. If it's three and a half, I'll take it no matter the money. You can pretty comfortably place that bet at FanDuel no matter what the number is, and it's probably going to hit. Like they're they're not moving it to five and a half yet, so keep on rolling with it. It's it's pretty it, it's uncanny. I mean, there's not many comparables around the league. The only guys are you know Austin Matthews and Alex Ovechkin who are always at the top of the shots on goal leaderboard. But Brady Kachuk third in the league behind only David Pasternak and Nathan McKinnon. Unreal. What other storylines stuck out? I think we've both basically, for the last 21 minutes, done our Sun Central standouts tonight. It's Brady Kachuk. Well, you touched on it there, Ross, so why not let's expand on it. I thought Jake Sanderson had a great game as well. You mentioned he gets that goal there. He also had the assist in 22 minutes and 46 seconds, and it was one of those games for Sandy where he just showed his impressive skating yet again. And that's what we love to watch when we see Jake Sanderson on the ice, but not only offensively, but defensively, he's able to use his skating to give him an opportunity. And he teed up Claude Giroux for such a nice shot. Giroux gets the one timer goal for the power play. And then Sanderson was also able to score a goal for himself. I'm trying to find it here in my notes, but uh, I'm, I'm losing it here. But I really thought that this was a game where Jake Sanderson showed that, He's going to be a big part of this future, and he's the number one defenseman on this team easily. 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 And for all these guys, it's going to be a quick turnaround. Senators play at 6 o'clock tomorrow in Washington. I find those games in Washington are always intense, heated. Obviously, last time they were in Washington, don't you remember? It was two goals quick for Washington, then Ottawa answered with two goals quick, and then Washington took the game from there. It was a very that was where Shane Pinto had one of the goals of the season where he was like turning around and high stick like batted the puck down and bounced it. It went in. It was a yeah. very sweet tip in that game. But yeah, uh, back to tonight's game. So I got sidetracked there because I'm looking up like what are Brady Kachuk's comparables and like that like think of the best version of Tom Wilson. It came up, so I started thinking of the game against Washington, but. Sure. I mean, he's a unicorn at this point, just with the amount of shots with, by the way, um, looking at it right now, Mark Kastelik shots on goal for the season sitting at 54. <laughs> so in the last 10 games, Brady has more than Casty has all year. Obviously they played different roles. Casty was physical tonight. I thought him and Kelly did well. They drew that penalty in the third period. They had a good game. Senders power play. Nice to see them clicking. I mean, over the last number of games, they had two in Minnesota and obviously a whole lot of nothing against Florida. So <laughs> and power play looking good. New contributors, right? I feel like recently the power play, who's it been? Chikrin, Batherson, and Brady Kachuk scoring goals. It's nice to see Claude Giroux being the guy that finishes on a play. Usually he's setting up Pinto for that bumper play, getting the assist nonetheless, but it's nice to see him use that power to score a goal. And then, yeah, like I mentioned, um, Jake Sanderson getting that goal is a really nice one. Giroux dropped it for Batherson, and then Batherson back to Sandy. And Sandy's been doing a really good job of identifying that there's traffic in front of the net moving over closer to the center of the ice to try to change the angles and get guys out of their lane and then rips it home. So that was a really, really nice performance on the power play by the Ottawa Senators tonight. So the goal scorers tonight for the Ottawa Senators, as Pilsy mentioned there, after it was already, you know, out of hand early with New Jersey scoring on their second shot of the game, three minutes, 50 seconds. And it was three, nothing after the first period, Jake Sanderson from Drake Batherson and Claude Giroux. And I want to stop on this one for a second as well, because it's been a while, but Claude Giroux gets his assist to pass Daniel Alfredson on the all time NHL list. So stick taps are in order to Claude Giroux on this one, 714 career assists to fifth to move into sole possession of 55th on the all-time list. There Our guy, go. John, John Pearlberg has the stat card up nice. and the other names in this range, Jean Beliveau with seven twelve, Scott Stevens with seven twelve, and Jeremy Roenick with 703. So that's pretty elite company for Claude Giroux to be in. And 
great to see him starting to contribute on the point uh, on the score sheet with points yep. because it, it has been, you know, less and less. We kept saying for so long how unbelievable it was that he was putting up a higher points per game in Ottawa than in Philadelphia, but hasn't really been going in as consistently and kind of goes hand in hand with Tim Stutzla struggling a little bit as well. Just two goals in the last 20 games for Claude Giroux. If you can even go a bit further, two goals in the last 25 games for Claude Giroux, obviously then he gets one tonight. So one in the last one, let's see a strong finish from Claude Giroux as well. And I would like to see him feeling good. I mean, maybe he is at his best when he's pissed off. You told the story on, on, on LOSP when we talked about him being the Masterton nominee that, you know, maybe those competitive juices flow even better after he's been beaten or knocked down, but they're going to need him to play as well this year, next year. They're going to be relying on him to be a top six contributor. And not just contributing Ross. He's such a veteran presence in that locker room. They're going to have to have him continuing to lead some of these young guys and show them, Hey, I know it seems like we're out of the season, but that's no excuse to, to have efforts like they did last game. Let's keep it going here. And him and Brady, Part of the leadership group, they did a great job of that tonight. And yeah, Claude Giroux, one of those consistent guys that, again, like Brady, we're so lucky to have him here. Send Central standout Claude Giroux goal assist tonight. Two shots. He goes 66% in the dot. And he plays a team high among forwards in ice time. Played 23 minutes tonight in the Ottawa Senators 4-3 loss to the New Jersey Devils. I mentioned the shots were even at 28 tonight. The scoring chances about even. Ottawa goes two for three on the power play. Gets cleaned out in the faceoff dot, losing 56.7%. But of course, with Brady having 16 hits, the Senators have 36. New Jersey with 19. Both teams with 21 block shots. Pillsy, any final thoughts on this game? Because I want to talk to you a little bit about Belleville and their impressive win tonight afterwards. Okay, I'm glad we're going to talk about Belleville. So I will just say that penalty shot that Jack Hughes gets, that's the hockey gods making sure everything is right in the world. Puck, don't lie. Because that was such a weak, weak, weak penalty call, in my opinion. I thought Thomas Shabbat played that pretty nicely. Only got a couple taps of the sticks in the midsection. Didn't pull him, didn't drag him, didn't hook him. Didn't do anything really to even warrant a penalty, let alone a penalty shot. So Hughes brings the puck in, goes for a deke and a shot, and whiffs on it. So that was that was nice to know that the Sens didn't get burned in that situation at the very least. Yeah, exactly. So let's uh, let's let's take solace in that. I don't know how much I can. <laughs> uh, it's anything, something. It's, it's something. something. Uh, anything else stand out to you in tonight's game? That's it for me. Let's go to a team that actually is winning their games recently, Ross. Okay, as we get there, we should mention, though, there is some news today. I think I think I want to save this for Locked On Senators. It's more that type of conversation. But the Senators making a couple off-ice changes today, firing two pro scouts, including their head of pro scouting. All I'm going to say in, in a postcast environment <laughs> is that this will not affect the NHL draft. Completely different. Pro scouting is trying to get NHL players here. Because I know some people are like, well, this time of year for scouts? We need scouts. But the amateur side still going to be covered. Don Boyd is running that. But it, yep. the amateur side is what's really helping Belleville be successful. Matt Sogard, great game tonight. They beat the Syracuse Crunch. And ironically, if they end up playing Syracuse in the playoffs, Pilsy, like that's a team that fin- is going to finish first in the division. But I believe Belleville's 5-2 and two against them this year. Yeah, they've had success up against them and having success up against the top team in your division when the points matter for you the most, the Belleville Senators right now, is a huge testament to the kind of toughness of this team and how David Bell has these guys going. Now, it's great that Mad Sogard is back in the mix as he uh, had a good game like you mentioned. He had 17 saves on 19 shots and it's also great for the Belleville Senators to get Tyler Clevin back in the mix, to get Rourke Chartier back in the mix. And I thought it was awesome to have guys like um, Peelzy, our guy, Garrett Peelon, oh, get, getting two goals also. And Pistol Pete, another one of our guys, getting in the mix with a goal as well. So the Belleville Senators came came to play here. Goal of the night, though, was Lassie Thompson went coast to coast. But yeah, that was coast. nice. Yeah, that was a good one by Lassie. You don't see that very often. So... Belleville can really just kind of create their own destiny 
Uh, Laval only has five games left. Laval won tonight, though. But two of their final five games are against Belleville. Got to win those games if you're Belleville. And shout out to the Disher, Stephen Halliday, two assists tonight. He's heating up three assists in his last two games. I hope he has a stat line like no goals, 20 assists, Pilsy. Like through the playoffs would be it'd be Derek Stepan-esque. Yeah, it would be. It would be. I would love that. On, I, I would love nothing more than that, Ross, for real. I just want them to win win some games and Keep feel good about themselves. They've been winning games, Ross. I know, three in a row. Yeah. So Ottawa's lost three in a row. Belleville's won three in a row. I think we should have a happy spin here to wrap up the show because I really feel like the tankathon balls are going to be in our favor for the Ottawa Senators. Am I am I out of control with this? Ross, you're not out of control. I've got first overall pick multiple times here. We had it last time we spun. I'm convinced. I feel good about it. It the Ottawa Senators deserve to have the draft lottery go in their favor. Exactly. They're stealing a first rounder from the Ottawa Senators, so at least let them have first overall. Yeah, thank you. Hockey gods help a fan base out. Come on. We, we would it. really, really appreciate it. Like, really appreciate it. So tonight we will do three spins, as always. One spin for the citizens, one spin for Pilsy, and one spin for me. Pilsy, you had the good spin last night, right? You got uh you got first overall last night. First overall, baby. I'm trying to fit all these teams in here. I guess it doesn't really matter. We can even go go so far down just to get Ottawa in because you can't drop from 7 to 12. But there are a few losers. Hey, Pittsburgh, man. Who would you rather in the NHL playoffs, Pittsburgh or Detroit? Probably Pittsburgh. It's nice to keep Detroit out. I think so, too. And Pittsburgh, New York, Rangers, it's like a classic matchup. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. I still would prefer Pittsburgh to miss. I think them drafting 12th and having to give the pick to San Jose from the Eric Carlson trade. Imagine if Eric Carlson had lottery picks going the other way multiple times in his career. Yeah, that would be wild. Where the team trading them would like think it's 20 to 30 and then it just tanks. It's a Ross. There could be a situation where Pittsburgh and Detroit don't make it. If, If Philly can figure their stuff out and bounce Pittsburgh out of there, I'd like that even more. All right, Pilsy, who gets a spin first? Let, let me have this first spin. I, it worked for me last time, so Ross, hit it. Oh, brutal. Okay. Darn. Brutal. Darn, I darn. hate this. Ottawa moves down one spot. So do a bunch of other teams. Buffalo goes up 10 spots to number one, and Anaheim moves up one spot to draft number two. All right. Okay. Should I should I give it to the citizens Saturday night? Yeah, yeah. You, you be the anchor spin here, Ross. Can't make your friends wait on a Saturday night. Don't be that friend. San Jose, first overall. Arizona moves up to number two. And Minnesota up the maximum 10 spots to number three. Ottawa down one spot. Not ideal. Don't love but that, is, but don't hate it. It is two Western Conference teams that move up. No, if the Sens move down in the draft, we hate it. Like, can't move down when you're already seventh. Yeah, but at least the no Eastern Conference implications. And I kind of like the idea of Celebrini going to San Jose. I feel like it's a it's a good story there. It is. My spin. Don't worry. I'll bring it home for everybody. Here's the second overall coming. Here we go. No. <laughs> uh oh. Just a nothing burger. Anaheim up two spots. San Jose down two spots. Yeah. Sensei in the same spot. We'll take that. Lucky number seven, seventh overall. I don't hate it. We can deal with that. Have the Sens ever drafted seventh overall? I don't, I don't know if they have. And this is like one of those fun people yeah, in the chat can give me some trivia answers. I'm I'm pulling it up. I will know the answer shortly. So get your get your guesses in now. I'm saying no. Have the Senators ever drafted seventh overall? Huh. I can make this into more trivia. The Senators. Look in the chat here. A lot of <laughs> okay. oh, we're getting name guesses. We've got Brian Lee. No. Ninth overall pick. Yeah, okay. He was right around there. Yeah. Ninth overall pick was Brian Lee. People people forget that Anze Kopitar went 11th in that draft. Yeah. Have the Senators ever drafted 7th overall? MJ says 
Mika Zabanajad. Mika Zabanajad went sixth overall. Little uh, fact about Anze Kopitar, since you mentioned it there, to give Sens a little bit of hope. Ian yep. Mendez mentioned it in his article. Don Boyd, head scout for uh, the Ottawa Senators. Yep. He t- was trying, banging the table, trying to convince Doug McLean to take Anze Kopitar for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Doug McLean said, nope, we're going with Gilbert, Gilbert Brule. We're not <laughs> taking Kopitar. And... Uh, we all know how that turned out. So at least Don Boyd was, uh, he was like able to identify that Kopitar was the right guy there. Gilbert Brule is an all time name drop. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've got Brady Kachuk here. Should we play Brady Kachuk's post game audio after a quick break? I mean, when you said an NHL record, I feel like it's worth hearing. No? I mean, he's the captain. I'll, I always like hearing from Brady. All right, if I can go just by facial expression, he might not be wanting to talk about his NHL record. 16. <laughs> what can you, uh, obviously you didn't, you didn't get the results you wanted here, but what can you say about uh, the team's efforts, certainly in the third period and coming close? That's how we need to play. Um, third period, I felt like that was probably our best period all year. Um, just, uh, no. We just, just did a little things, right? Put it behind them, kind of physical, and, and um, our long guy stepped up and just opposed uh, a couple chances that could have walked on in. And just the goalie made some you know, big saves or, or big blocks uh, by their team. So um, tough result, but um, you know, proud of the pushback and the effort that uh, we had there. Yeah. Uh, there's a need for you to lead by example. And by that, I'm, I'm just referring to the number of hits that you had tonight. I think you set a franchise record for 16, maybe 17 hits tonight. Well, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, physicality tonight. I thought Casty, Bo, Kels' line, Boko stepping up. Um, and I think there's a lot of guys tonight that played physical and, and uh, you know, set the tone after, you know, last game that um, you now we knew that can't happen again. So for us, uh, um, you know, slow start for us, but um, – which we need to correct and fix, but I think we need to, you know, play the way that we did in the third period moving forward. Even before you scored that goal in the third period, this crowd was chanting your name after a couple of big hits. What does that mean to you that, that they're chanting your name here at the end of the – obviously, I know it's a disappointing season. Yeah. I mean, it's – it's you know, like you said, it's, it's you know, been a disappointing season. And, uh, you know, for, you know, the fans to to do that, you know, it's, it's you know, pretty amazing. That's – it just – speaks volumes about the, the people that we have in the city and the support that we have through thick and thin. And, and just, um, you know, I know it's been you know, disappointing for everybody, but, um, you know, speaking on behalf of everybody that's part of this organization, it's uh, very grateful and, and uh, appreciate all the support. And, and uh, you know, when things are tough, it's uh, you're always there for us. So um, you know, a lot of love and, and uh, you know, very, very much appreciate the support. You up. You can hear more from Brady Kachuk on the Senators' YouTube page. Pilsy, he brought up Boko Imamu, played his Sens first Sens game, but obviously had a cup of coffee with the Arizona Coyotes last season. A great story of perseverance to get to the National Hockey League. Angus Crookshank brought him up on this show just a couple weeks ago, talking about how he's one of the most feared players in the American Hockey League. He's a guy who always stands up for his teammate and always comes through with good energy, good vibes, a leader. And Pierre Dorian sat in a room, looked us in the eye last offseason and said that signing was more for Ottawa than Belleville. I think a part of this might have been Ryan Bonus feeling that conversation because he was here for that. He's the GM in Belleville. He controls to an extent who comes up and down. I think this was a really classy move for a guy who's bled for this organization all year and who I, I think, you know, stood up, wasn't the best fight tonight. We know he, he can provide better. We saw a huge fight by him in Belleville just last night. What did you think of Boko's game? And um, he had also had a moment with Chris Tierney. Yeah, uh, I, I think Boko is uh, obviously a great guy. He's a, a big kind of, he's got an aura about him, a good energy to him. So I, I'm sure guys like Tom Shabbat and Matthew Joseph who have experience playing with him junior, were kind of vouching for him as well. However, Ross, I don't, 
I would have liked a better showing from him in this one. Uh, the fight doesn't go his way, unfortunately, and then pretty dirty hit on Chris Tierney. <laughs> like if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a guy brought up for physicality, um, Brady Kachuk showed you can throw 16 clean hits out there. That was not a clean clean hit. So uh, I like the idea of what Boko brought to the table, not necessarily the execution. So maybe he'll get another opportunity to clean it up. Yeah, I felt like I walked you right through the Boko Imama storyline right to the edge of the cliff, and then I pushed, and I said, so how did you on the ice? Yeah, yeah, you kind of did there, but that's okay. And I mean, I mean, no disrespect to Boko. He seems like a great guy. We'd love to have him on the show, and uh, hopefully he has lots more moments with uh, the Senators franchise. But didn't love the fight, didn't love the hit. I'll just say that. Okay, so the Ottawa Senators lose 4-3 tonight. Any other thoughts on what Brady Kachuk said there? Uh, no, I, I think it's good that, you know, after that embarrassing loss, at least, uh, talking to the media this time, he, he gets to be like a little bit praised, like, Hey, you had all those hits, you were fighting hard. How'd you feel about the sends, uh, fans chanting your name, that kind of stuff, even though he has the kind of political answers and shuts it down and being like, Hey, we want to be better, blah, blah, blah. But at least it's a nice bit of a narrative spin to have him kind of praised rather than being like, so how do you deal with the worst, most embarrassing loss you've ever had in front of your fans losing to your big brother? And, and it's just like, well, what am I supposed to say here? So a little, uh, you know, a little bit of a nice uh, refreshing turnaround of narratives here for Brady when he's talking to the media this time. Pilsy, 4-3 was the loss tonight. Sens have lost three in a row. Now they're going out on the road where they've had no success this season, including a loss in Washington what, January, February? It was, feels like it wasn't that long ago that the Senators suffered that loss. But you want to do a quick game day preview? Who are you be watching for in that game? Uh, sorry, I'm trying to find that Washington game. End of January, January 26th. It was a 6-3 loss in Washington. Um, what I'm looking for in that game, Ross, is I want the Ottawa Senators to be able to shut down Alex Ovechkin. He's had success up against them, and he's heating up. I know he was cold for most of this season, but he's back to his old ways. He's heating up here. Yes. 43 goals away from tying Wayne Gretzky. You think he gets it this season? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I wouldn't get it past him for next season, though, and the next season. Yeah, especially if he, he gets, you know, three, four more goals this season. It's not that crazy. Uh, so you want to shut him down. And this is a chance to play spoiler. The Washington Capitals still are very much in uh, the fight for this. They're only one point out of a playoff spot. And since they're in the Metro, there's two spots up for grab. Really, they're one spot out of two playoff spots. However, they've got three teams the Flyers, the Penguins, and the New York Islanders who are in the same position as them. So this is a massive, massive home game for the Caps. Let's see the Sens play with some more pride, bring along that same energy and battle that they did today, and let's see them do that on the road uh, against the Caps tomorrow. There could be as much of a 15% playoff probability swing for the Washington Capitals, Huge. whether they win or lose in regulation on Sunday. Obviously, there are still a few games ongoing on this Saturday night. Uh, we've got the Ca Canucks and Kings going at it. We've got the Oilers and Flames. Uh, those are the only two games still underway. So, obviously, the East is asleep for the night. So, yeah, we can look at the standings right now. And the Washington Capitals on this game day against Ottawa are going to wake up one spot behind the Pittsburgh Penguins for the final playoff spot in the Eastern conference and the penguins have stormed up the standings winning four in a row. And how about the trade that's worked out for them trading get Jake Gensel, Michael Bunting, I believe had the game winner in tonight's yep. game. Like Gensel has been great in, in Carolina and Bunting's been great in Pittsburgh. And then you throw in a handful of decent prospects in there. So that's looking good for now, but uh, I just want the senators to be a part of a playoff race. So bad Pillsy. This looks like so much fun where one night, like I'm watching it with the red wings and they're, they're, uh, frustrating fans especially when they're winning but like the islanders have been up and down all year they're minus 23 goal differential and they're holding down the third spot in the metro it's like insane. these teams like their fans have been like they're dead they're back they're dead they're back where it's like ottawa just dies so early that it's like are they bad no right they don't have when when they push they're not in the mix they're just they fall behind too early and again the first 20 games next year pills are going to feel like it's mid-March in terms of the importance of those games for Ottawa. Yeah, I mean, at least, Ross, this will come with some change. DJ Smith had a really hard time finding ways to start strong. It's going to be new coaching staff. 
probably a big shakeup in the offseason, a big draft. So there is reason for optimism just for the simple matter of fact that there has been a lot of change here and we should see different results as a, as a kind of uh, process of that. And the immediate change is we're going to be, we're going to be looking at new pro scouting coming in, but those are conversations we'll continue on locked on senators next week. We are your team every day, no matter whether the senators have won five or lost three. Oh, might be four by Monday's episode in a hey. row, but we will have new episodes for you. Great guests lined up for the off season, but we have this show. We respect the sports calendar, Pilsy. So right. after the NHL season, we'll eulogize it. We'll discuss players, their growth, their potential, whether or not they should be a part of the senators going forward. If they want to compete for a playoff spot, and then we'll turn our attention to the draft as well. So any final thoughts here as we sign off and let everyone know that we'll be back for the postcast after tomorrow night's game? Final thoughts for me is thanks to everyone who showed up to the postcast, 117 in there right now. We love all you guys. We appreciate all you guys. And, hey, I know it's not going great here, but let's soak in these last Sens games. Back-to-back games. We'll take it. Sends action. Hopefully they can have a better start to tomorrow's game than they did on this one. Maybe, Ross, just maybe, and I know maybe it's asking too much. We'll set the bar low. Let's see three saves off the bat, no matter which goal it is. Three whole saves to start tomorrow's game. That's my goal for it. <laughs> what a depressing way to end the show, Pelsey. You had to go there. No, I mean, it was mostly positive. If they get three saves, that's positive. Three straight games. You're number three there. Really cut deep because, yeah, three straight games allowing a goal in the first two shots. If I, I, I keep having to say it just because so well. 20 times this year in 77 games. More than one every four games. The Senators allow a goal on the first two shots. It really Too many. is. Too many. It really is hard to wrap your head around. We'll see if they can do it tomorrow. Get a road win. In yeah. Washington, 6 o'clock puck drop, uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock postcast. We'll see you on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe, like, tell a friend. Be a friend? <laughs> Be a friend? Tell a friend. Both work. Right here. Subscribe to the pod. That's Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan. We'll talk to you tomorrow. This has been another edition of Locked on Senators postcast presented by the Glebe Central Pub. Go check out the good vibes at the Glebe Central Pub, 779 Bank Street, and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. I hate this song. I don't want to play it, but we can't have Danger Flutes as much as it's fan appreciation night after a 4-3 loss to the New Jersey Devils. Mm -hmm.